In July, I reported on a Windows 10 bug that I had found that causes processes that are being destroyed to hold on to a lock for too long. This hurts performance, but the real problem is that this same lock is needed for processing input events, leading to repeated UI hangs. Two months later, Microsoft thought they had fixed this bug. Several people asked me to test the fix, and it turns out that the bug was not fixed. So I'm making this short video to show any developer how to use ETW tracing to tell when this bug has been fixed. It's important before doing any of these measurements to reboot your machine. The problem is that this bug gets worse over time. If your machine has been up for a few days or a few weeks, the symptoms will be worse. So if you install an OS update and then reboot and measure before and after, you'll see an improvement, but that improvement is from the reboot, not from the OS update. I also like to disable Windows Defender when doing these measurements, just because it adds a lot of noise to the measurements. Now, the basic methodology is we need to record an ETW trace of processcreatetests.exe. This is a test program I created that creates a thousand processes, then it waits for half a second, and then it destroys all 1,000 processes simultaneously. And we're going to look at the CPU usage of this test running. So I've got UI for ETW, my trace recording program, and I'm going to turn off CPU sampling call stacks because they're just not needed for this particular measurement. And then I'm going to run my test program. First, I'll type Control Windows R to start trace recording, then run the test, and then Control Windows R again to save the trace to disk. Simple enough. I'm going to rename this trace to remind me of why I recorded it. And by the way, I am running the Fall Creators update. Now I'm going to open this trace in WPA, that's Microsoft's ETW Trace Viewer. Now, I don't need the generic events data, I don't need the window and focus data, and I don't need the CPU usage sample data. I just want this CPU usage precise data, which is derived from context switches. The trouble is, Process Create Tests spawns a thousand different processes. Each one uses very little CPU time, so we can't really see them very well on this graph. If we bring up the table, though, we can add a new column, new process name, and this tells WPA to group CPU usage by process name. And we can now see all the CPU usage added up together. But unfortunately, we've lost the graphing. Now we can fix that by clicking on individual processes to graph their CPU usage, or we can right click, go enable in entire graph, all new process names. And now we've got all of them being viewed simultaneously. To make it even easier to see what's going on, we can click here and do stacked lines. And this causes all the CPU usage to be added together. And it becomes much easier to see how much idle time we've got and how much time we're using. I'm then going to zoom in to the interesting series of the graph. And uh, now we can talk a bit more about what's happening. This is the process create time, and we can see that it's mostly CPU bound. There's some unaccounted for time here, and there's some idle time here, but it's mostly pretty much CPU bound. Then there's the half second of idle time that I put into the program. And then here's all the process destruction CPU usage. And you can see that it's CPU bound at the beginning, it's CPU bound at the end, and in the middle, it is distinctly not CPU bound. In fact, it's using about one eighth of the CPU power, and that's because I have an eight thread CPU, and lock contention means that only one of these processes can be being destroyed at a time. So this is the signature of the bug. We can see that in Fall Creators Update, the bug is still there. So again, this is what it looks like when you have the bug, and this is the classic horseshoe shape showing lock contention in the middle here. This is what it looks like for the process destruction when the bug does not exist. 
And this is from Windows 7, so long before this bug was introduced. If you want more information, go to tinyurl.com slash 24 core CPU to read about the initial investigation and report of this bug. For more discussions like this, you can subscribe to my blog or follow me on Twitter. Thanks for listening.